Recently, the Philadelphia 76ers matched the three-year contract Paul Reed signed with the Utah Jazz, and shortly after, the 24-year-old was quoted by Sixers Wire saying, I've talked to him, meaning new Sixers head coach Nick Nurse, plenty of times, and it's always been kind of the same kind of idea. He talked about molding me into a Pascal Siakam type player, somebody who can kind of do it all, shoot the ball, drive, pass, but right now, it's all about focusing on my shot mechanics. That's the start. That's where it starts at. It was so fascinating to see this quote because I've always felt only a fraction of Reed's skill potential has been explored in the NBA. When he was playing at DePaul, I felt like he had a Pascal Siakam-like game, even though I did feel it was less refined, not as sharp, and less crafty. But the tools, the variation, the aesthetic, and body type made me think of Siakam and believed perhaps that was his ceiling. Obviously, so far in the NBA, he's primarily just been an energy hustle guy who moves his feet well defensively on the perimeter, protects the rim, and is relentless on the glass as a second unit center backing up Joel Embiid. I just believe there are things with Reed that have yet to be unlocked, and I just wonder if we'll finally start seeing some of it applied when he's on the floor. The first thing I wanted to examine were things he was doing in the G League when he was playing for the Delaware Bluecoats. Now of course, there is a huge gap between the NBA and the G League, so take everything players do in the G League with a grain of salt, but in 2021, when the G League season was in the Disney bubble, Reed averaged 22.3 points per game in the regular season and was named the MVP. Oddly enough, he again averaged 22.3 points in the G League the following season, albeit in fewer games. Reviewing some of his scoring plays, we see him attack the basket using his blend of size, athleticism, relentlessness, and decent touch. This is a little Siakam-esque. It's not always pretty, but sometimes the footwork, the shiftiness, and the outmuscling of his opponents really shines. Just looking at what makes Siakam so special, and then the flashes Reed has shown when given a little bit of a green light to attack off the dribble, you just wonder if maybe this can be incorporated into Reed's arsenal more frequently. A little like Pascal, Reed has a fairly nifty spin move. Again, not saying Reed is nearly as polished or sharp, but the aesthetic doesn't seem that far off if Reed attacked more often. Here are some more clips showing Reed attacking the basket in the G League. Anyone who's ever watched Reed play knows his jump shot form is not a thing of art by any means. But man, sometimes he surprises me with some of his movements to create space off the dribble. Just look at these step back jumpers during his G League time. If you never mind the shot form and mechanics, you'd probably have a much different opinion of his offensive potential. Even on his misses, there's some impressive stuff going on here. Of course, this is a big part of Siakam's offensive package as well. Clearly, Pascal's ball handling is far better, and he's far more patient with the ball in his hands. In the post as well during his G League stint, we saw some nifty movement and a pretty solid touch. Again, it's never pretty really, as far as the aesthetic, but sometimes it is effective. So let's get into one of the more highly debatable topics with Reed, and that is whether the Sixers need to make him more of a floor spacer. The thing that puzzles me is that as awkward as his jump shot looks visually, in college he was at least serviceable with his long range shooting. His sophomore year, he made 15 of his 37 attempts from beyond the arc, and in his junior year, which was his last, he made 16 of his 52 attempts. And then in his two G League seasons combined, he shot 44.1% from downtown on 93 attempts. 
He's only taken 23s total in three seasons in the NBA, but made just three of them. Looking at these threes he made in the G League, obviously it's not pretty, but he made some of them even off movement, which is rare for someone his size. What we already know about Reed is that he's going to do all the dirty work set good screens, and make a big defensive impact with his blend of size, hustle, timing, and awareness. A question that has popped up before is whether Joel Embiid and Reed can be on the floor at the same time. This has happened in nine games since Reed joined the team, according to Second Spectrum. The Sixers as a team have taken 54 shots with them on the floor together. Here you see Reed having some effectiveness hanging around the baseline. And then here he shows aggressiveness attacking the basket. And then Embiid, of course, doing his damage in face-up one-on-one situations from the mid-range and making moves before the double team comes. Just looking over Reed's per 36-minute average stats from last season, it was 13.7 points, 12.5 rebounds, 2.4 blocks, and 2.2 steals. He made 59.3% of his floor shots, and he shot 74.5% from the free throw line. His best scoring performance came on November 22nd against Brooklyn, with 19 points on 7 of 9 shooting from the field, and 5 of 6 from the free throw line. He scored in double figures 9 times over the 69 games he appeared in. So that'll wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe.